Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to create a people search experience in Power Apps. The screen we will design will allow to select multiple users from Microsoft Entra ID, and these multiple selections will be displayed in a horizontal gallery. These selections will also be used to filter data in a table control or a gallery control, and I will show this for both Dataverse and SharePoint. So let's check this video out in action. In this Power App screen, I have the modern table control that lists the data from a data source. And I have the option to filter the data based on a person type column. Here, you can search for users in Microsoft Entra ID. I'll search for Sarah. Notice how the table control hides, and this will list out all the users whose names or email addresses contain the text that's entered in this text box. I can click, and this user gets added to the refiner panel on the top. And the table control is now filtered to show all the tasks that are assigned to Sarah. I'll search for Alice. Now, the filter is to show the tasks for both the users selected. Searching for Reza, multiple users. I'll pick my account. Now the tasks are filtered, where assigned to is either one of these users. We can remove any of the users and the filter will automatically keep getting applied. If all's clear, it will show all the tasks for all the users. So let's try and design this experience. I'll show this with two data sources, Dataverse and SharePoint. Here, I have a screen in which I have a table control, the items property for which is a table in Dataverse called Project Tasks. In this table, I have a column called Assign To, which is a lookup column to the user table. For SharePoint folks, this is similar to a person type column in SharePoint. The table control shows the data from that connected Dataverse table. Now to design the interface, where the user can search for users, instead of building that from scratch, guess what? We have a screen template. The screen template is called people. I'll go ahead and select this. This will add the Office 365 users connector to the Power App because this template has controls that uses the Office 365 Users Connector to search for users in your organization. Let's preview and try this out. I'll search for James. Here's James. Select, James gets added. Reza, select, and so on and so forth. Let's search for Sarah. If I select this gallery that lists out all the users based upon the text entered in this text box, this gallery is called User Browse Gallery. I'll go ahead, copy this gallery, go to my screen, and in the main container where I have the table control, I'll right click on the container and paste that control. Now that gallery sits at the bottom. The items property for this gallery is as follows. Notice here it's looking up to a text box control and if there is text entered, it uses the Office 365 users connector to search for users based on the text entered. I have this container on the top. It's a horizontal container. In this, I'll go and insert the modern text input control. I'll go to properties for this text input control, alignment and container center, placeholder text. I'll say search for users. I can also add 
emojis here. This text input control, I will rename as txt input canvas user. I'll copy the name of this text input control. This gallery items property, I'll put my modern text input controls name dot value will give me its data. And I'll do the same thing for the search term property as well. This gallery should only be visible if that text input control is not blank. In my case, my modern text input control. Notice there's no text, so that gallery is hidden. And this table control should only be visible if my modern text input control dot value is blank. Let's preview. I'll search for Sarah. Notice nothing happens. I have to click out and then it will perform the search. We'll fix that. The modern text input control has a property called trigger output. This I will change to delayed, meaning it will wait for the user to type. And once you stop typing, it will then send the output value of this text input control. Let's try it out. I'll make it empty. The table control becomes visible. Now I'll type for James. It searches for users with the text James. This gallery, I'll edit. I'll move the title, the profile image. I'll move it here. This icon, I'll move it right on top. Now, if I preview, now if I click on this, there is an action that's taken. On the title control, there is a property called on select. On select of this, it collects data in a collection. This collection will include the information of all the users selected in this gallery. Notice here it's resetting that search text box. In my case, it's my modern control. When I click, it adds the user to that collection. Now, if I search for Reza, select Reza, Reza is added to that collection. Now back to this filter container. In here, I'll go and insert a blank horizontal gallery control. This gallery, minimum height, I'll set as parent dot height. I'll edit this gallery. And in here, I'll go and insert a standard container control. The only reason I'm using this container control is to create this nice drop shadow effect, which comes with containers. The property is drop shadow. I'll set it to semi light. It's width. I'll set it to 220. And my gallery template size property. I'll set it to 230. Five. This gallery items property, I'll use that collection, my people. I have three people in that collection, James, Reza and Alice. So that's why the three boxes. I'll edit the gallery and the container inside the gallery. Here, I'll go and add an image control. I'll position it right here. Now here I want to show the profile image of the user selected. If I go back to that template screen and let's just search for Sarah. Here's the image. Image property has this formula. I'll simply copy this. Go back to my screen. Select my image control and paste that same formula. And there you go, shows the images of those users. I'll select the container again. Now I'll go and insert the modern 
text control. I'll position it next to the image. The text property, I'll use this item dot. Because we are querying Office 365 users, we get a lot of properties of the user from Microsoft Entra ID. Here I'll show the display name. And once again in this container, I'll go and insert the cancel icon. I'll go and position it on the right. On select of this icon, I'll simply use the function remove to remove from that collection this item. These are the three users selected. You can remove Alice, James. Let's search for another user, Sarah. Click, Sarah gets added. And this can act as a refiner to our table or gallery. Currently, the items property for the table controller is my Dataverse table. Here, filter my project tasks. My first condition will be count rows of my people collection is equal to zero. Now, what this first condition does is if there are no users selected, meaning that collection is empty, then this condition will equate to true and it will show all the data from my data source. Let's test it. There we go. Now, if I have a user selected, so here I'll add an or condition and my query will be my column name, which is assigned to, it's a lookup column to my user table. So assigned to dot will list out all the columns on the user table. I'll use primary email. Is it in my collection dot? There's a property mail. Done. Format text. This is what the formula looks like. In is a delegable query with Dataverse as a data source. Now it lists out all the tasks assigned to Sarah. Let's add James. Here are all the tasks assigned to Sarah or James. And if I remove Sarah, it will give me the data for James. If I remove James, it will give me all the data. How does this work with SharePoint as a data source? I have a list in SharePoint in which I have a person type column. You may be thinking the formula is the same. Well, it's not because in is not a delegable query with SharePoint. I'm filtering my SharePoint list. First, I'm checking if count rows of my people is equal to zero. Then I have other conditions that I've added. Literally all I'm doing in each of these conditions is assigned to, which is person type column dot email, go and compare it with different items in my collection. So here I've said the first item of that collection, then the second, then the third. If you need more, you can add more. You cannot make this dynamic because in is not a delegable query, but you can at least frame a set of users. In my case, I've framed three. So the end user can select up to three users to filter the results by. Sarah, filtering my SharePoint list. It's a large list, over 5,000 records. James, now lists out tasks assigned to Sarah or James. Reza. Notice I've said maximum three selections allowed. And how did I do that? For my text input control, display mode property, I check the count rows of that collection. If it's three, set the mode to disabled, else edit. And the placeholder text as well, I am changing based upon the number of items in that collection. If three, I'll say max three selections allowed. 
Else, I'll say you can search, that is if the number of users is less than three. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.